This is IAQ Radio, Indoor Air Quality Radio, the voice of the indoor air quality industry, with your hosts, Radio Joe Hughes and the Z-Man, Cliff Zlotnick. And now, Radio Joe Hughes. Good day and welcome to IAQ Radio Plus. The Z-Man is back from the Cleaning Industry Research Institute conference at the Miami of Ohio University. We've also got the executive director of Siri, John Donny, joining us. Looking forward to, I think it's a, a great opportunity for listeners to get a quick rundown of the various presentations at the Siri conference and uh, get some, some highlights and key points from both Cliff and John. So before we do that, let's thank our marquee sponsor. IAQ Radio Platinum Sponsor is John Don Products, where restoration and abatement contractors shop. Visit them at johndon.com. That's J-O-N-D-O-N.com. I also want to thank our gold sponsors, Particles Plus, Healthy Indoors Magazine, Gray Wolf Sensing Solutions, and AEML Inc. Laboratory. And, of course, our association sponsors, Siri, the Cleaning Industry Research Institute, the Indoor Air Quality Association, and the Restoration Industry Association. I think most listeners know John Donny. John is the uh, founder of the original, I think it was Clean Facts, and then he has uh, been in the industry doing some things such as editor of the IICRC Journal, and now he's the executive director of the Cleaning Industry Research Institute. Uh, they just had their conference this week at the Miami of Ohio University, and I heard great things. I want to welcome John, and let's move on to part two of our uh, review and recap of the recent Siri conference held at the Miami University of Ohio. Uh, we're going to go on to session four, which was the science and research, a paradigm in the 21st century. Cliff, let's start with uh, Bill McGarvey. Yeah, Bill McGarvey, uh, this was, I, I lo love this presentation. Uh, he's a salesman for a uh, janitorial uh, supply company uh, in the Philadelphia area. But uh, first of all, I think many of us don't realize this, but the school custodian is really the front line in protecting the health of the kids that go to school there and the faculty. And that, uh, you know, sometimes those cleaning people that have been there for a long time may be resistant to change. You know, this is the way we were always, we've always done it. This is the way I was taught to do it. And sometimes a yeah, new technology comes out and they may be a little bit resistant uh, to it. Uh, he talked about the fact that cleaning staff uh, now uh, may be physically or mentally challenged that uh, the, you know, the cleaning field can be a good occupation uh, for people that, you know, live with some sort of challenge and it gives them uh, dignity and uh, it's meaningful for them and it provides a feeling of belonging. Hmm. Uh, he said that just competition in the cleaning industry, whether it's manufacturers or, or cleaning companies, limits collaboration. And I guess this is the exact opposite of uh, the way Greg Whiteley looks at it. But uh, I think Bill's right that, you know, there, there tends to be, uh, you know, limited uh, cooperation because of competition. And he says, you know, oftentimes management uh, is driven by spreadsheet, management by spreadsheet. And I think a lot of times people are look at, concerned about the bottom line and the numbers and profits, and they're really not thinking about everything else. Um, he also questioned, uh, is it really innovation or is it marketing hype? Uh, and I think that was one of the things I tried to kind of point out and point out in my practical experiment was the situation, you know, was it? marketing hype or did it really work? Um, he, he advised us that these microbial hits 
are going to keep coming. There are going to be more and more super bugs, and we really need to have good cleaning practices and, and uh, be ready for them. You know, one of the things that struck me uh, at the ISSA uh, last uh, November when I was there also struck Bill McGarvey, what, and I think I mentioned it in my report of the ISSA, was the use of robotics. Everywhere uh, you were there, they had robotic machines that could do this and, and could do that. And he just said that they've introduced robotic restroom dispensers that can talk to each other and can talk to management. So, you know, I'm out of soap or <laughs> I, I need towels and uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely amazing. He said that there's going to be a technological opportunity uh, in the cleaning industry. You know, they're getting higher tech equipment. They're going to need people who know how to fix it, who know how to sell it, and know how to uh, maintain it. Uh, and actually, this bigger equipment actually can talk to itself, uh, talk to others, and, and communicate with management. You know, he also mentioned what, what Pete said, which is this poor career image uh, of people in the cleaning and, and restoration industry. You know, sometimes it's not viewed as a trade when it is. Uh, it's important that people that do this work, uh, you know, can make a living wage. Uh, he, he closed with saying we need unifying standards and that uh, science must lead the way. Uh, John, your comments on Bill McGarvey. John? I would echo Cliff's. I, I, one thing I wanted to clarify is that Bill is actually a, not really a salesman, although he supports the sales staff for the company he works for in, uh, in uh, Philadelphia or the Philadelphia area, Philip uh, Rosenau Company. Right. And, um, you know, he is the director of training and sustainability for him. And uh, you know, he's been involved in Siri almost since the beginning. Uh, not so much in a, really not in a leadership capacity, but, but he, he's one of those people that gets what Siri's about. And I wanted him to talk uh, as someone who, who gets, you know, what Siri is about from a training perspective. Um, you know, and, and especially as how is it going to, is the sort of thing that, things that science, that science provides, how is that going to help science as well as uh, new technology, which Cliff so well just, just described, uh, how does that aid everybody in the, in the, in the, in the you know, up and down the, cha the value chain uh, from that janitor to the guy doing the sales selling uh, to the manufacturer, especially with the new technology. And I thought, Phil did a great job of uh, explaining that. Uh, he's very he's very seasoned. Has been working in the Jansen world. What did I say? I think I I introduced him. I was the moderator, and I introduced him. I, I think he told me that he has trained like fourteen thousand people and since two thousand ten. So in less than ten years, he's trained like fourteen thousand individuals. He knows a little bit about training. Right, right. Well, you know, what's kind of impressive to me just going through all this is, is the, the commitment, the passion that a lot of cleaning professionals have for the work they do and, and their interest in making sure that it's science-based and science-backed and it's cleaning for health. Um, I, I think that, that just resonates through and through with each of these presentations. Cliff, let's shoot down to Dr. Ralph Moon. Uh, Ralph's uh, presentation was was great. It was about paradigm shifts and uh, you know big changes uh, uh, in, you know in in the industry that that are coming and things that we never thought would happen. And he just gave some great examples. You know we never thought that a yellow cab would uh, succumb to Uber. Mm -hmm. uh, we never thought that doctors you know that scalpels would become lasers. You know, we never thought that uh, Amazon would put box stores uh, out of business. You know, I don't think we ever thought that uh, NASA would rely upon SpaceX, you know, to put satellites 
uh, you know, in, in orbit, and that all those things that happened wouldn't have occurred without science and research and how important science and research is. And he said that it's very important that we attract and nurture far-thinking students that keep their imaginations and take us into the future. You know, sometimes the way we teach uh, doesn't stimulate imagination and, and create creativity. Uh, one of the things that he said was that it was a large company. I don't remember uh, which one it was, but they required employees of the company uh, to provide ideas and that this company got thousands of ideas from employees that they could look at and they were just phenomenal because a lot of times there's just, just diversity. You know, speaking of diversity, I, I think that, you know, the whole event was very diverse from the speakers and, and from the, the attendees. And this was, I think it was just a great uh, example of, I guess, what I would call good diversity. Good, good. Uh, John, do you want to add anything on Ralph's presentation? Uh Science, I think it's saying the same thing as, as what Cliff has said. Science and research is the engine of progress. Uh, and, and that's one, what, I think that's one of the things that he said, or if not in those words, that's what he meant. Of course, he is a researcher and a scientist. Mm -hmm. So uh, he kind of had, he's that, that is his paradigm. But he did a great job of uh, showing how that paradigm or how our paradigms can shift uh, as a consequence of all the new technology. And I don't know if it was Ralph or somebody, you know, it was um, Alan Rathy actually, who was talking about the, the uh, volume of knowledge and how fast it is right. Right. changing. It, the, the pace of uh, new knowledge has uh, grown exponentially and if he doesn't find it then when uh, Alan is talking I'll uh, I, I don't remember the exact thing but I, I, I remember enough of it that I'll I'll go over it so uh, all right. that's that's all we can always add it to the blog as well let's let's move on to the next presentation David Kaiser we mentioned him earlier uh, Cliff um, he provided uh, some very interesting uh, statistics. Um, as Pete said, he's very, very passionate uh, about the cleaning industry. And um, one of the things that I, I never knew was that MRSA in the United States kills 10,000 people annually. And he talked about his own experience uh, with MRSA. Uh, he ended up having some sort of cut or injury uh, on his hand or on his arm, and it got it got really really bad. and And his daughter is is a nurse, and uh, again, he had a life threatening experience personally uh, with MRSA, and he kind of chronicled uh, that. Uh, I never knew that one of three people in the United States carry staff uh, in their nose. And just the importance of scientific research and how crucial it is to maintain safe indoor environments were, were my takeaways. from John? I've known David for a number of years, and uh, I'm I intentionally... This uh, session four was intentionally, we, it's called Science and Research, a Paradigm for the 21st Century. Uh, informally, I called it the Why Siri uh, session because I, I wanted people from the different perspectives to uh, describe um, why they felt that science and research, which is what Siri is about, uh, was important. And, and Dave does such a great, brings such a passion to it and a deep understanding. Uh, Joe, you just uh, mentioned cleaning for health as a, uh, as a theme that goes through it. And, and Cliff was talking about uh, the specifics of, of David's own personal story. 
but that that was really as was the case for me mike berry's book uh, protecting the built environment cleaning for health uh and then the the things that have happened as a consequence to that and, and for me and i know for jim harris the chairman of siri and i know for dave kaiser and i know for hundreds if not thousands of others that that represented a real uh, significant paradigm shift and paradigm shift for the industry. You know, I don't know if not for the, this concept of cleaning for health, whether Dave Kaiser ever would have gotten involved in the industry because he's a passionate guy and wants to make a difference. And when he got, got this bug about the, the, the uh, connection between proper cleaning and hygiene and health and how he could ha play a small part in uh, developing that and, and, and building on that. It, it, I mean, it changed him. He, he started a trade association uh, and, and he, his focus was really as a trade association uh, and, you know, how they can, can um, uh, facilitate that, promote that with their membership for the benefit, not only of their members, but uh, of the industry overall uh, of the, um, uh, no, I'm sorry, I take that back. Not the industry overall, but the consuming public. Uh, because, it, you know, really it's, it's something where we can make a difference uh, in, in the country, in the world, uh, by, um, you know, by changing, you know, as, as Jim mentioned in his talk, Cliff, uh, at the dinner, uh, making a new industry, one that and, that, and kind of the core of that industry would be the importance of proper cleaning and hygiene uh, and, and the value it has for people's health. I got off on a rant there, so sorry. No problem, John. Oh. Thank you. Let's, let's go to the next one. Actually, you mentioned Jim Harris, and I, I noticed that he was the banquet speaker, and he's the chairman of Siri. Uh, Cliff, thoughts from Jim's presentation? Um, three words. Courage inspiration, leadership. Um, you know, very rarely do, I, I think very rarely over the course of my entire career uh, have I been moved uh, as much as I was by uh, Jim Harris Sr.'s uh, remarks uh, at, at, at that dinner. Uh, you know, there, there was honesty, there was... Uh, uh, you know, and I think, you know, the courage of, of, of being honest and, and admitting that uh, certain things hadn't gone uh, to plan, admitting that was mistakes are made uh, and kind of getting past it, uh, uh, talking about uh, his reflections on his conversations uh, with Mike Barry. Uh, and uh, that was something um, I, I, I think that. Uh, you know, he asked the question of who in the room uh, was a member uh, of Siri, and I was sitting kind of right in in front, so I, I couldn't really turn around. And you know, let's just say that maybe a third of the people were members. Uh, John would know a little bit better than I was, but I would say maybe a third of the people were members. And uh, you know, he asked them to stand, and then he asked all the other people, "Why aren't you members?" And then he said, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm the grand poobah. I'm going to make you a member. <laughs> and so the only way you're going to get out of being a member of Siri, uh, you know, is to, uh, is to opt out. And, uh, you know, I think it was a spur of the moment thing. I don't think he had it planned, you know, and, uh, but, you know, he talked about uh, how tough it is to, you know, to change an industry, you know, particularly when there are, you know, economic reasons for not checking or, you know, for not changing. And uh, then he talked about, you know, creating a new industry. And uh, I think that's what he's doing uh, with Siri. And I think that that's something that has to be done. Uh, maybe it's taking a little longer than he had hoped, but uh... We're here to help and uh, appreciate Siri sponsorship, and uh, we'll, we'll continue to focus on on Siri and their their efforts as time goes on. John, did you want to add anything? You know, 
um, I've known, I knew Jim before in a very minor way. Um, I've been uh, working with him for not quite two years now. And, um, I, I'm, and I, I'm not saying this, you know, for any, for any reason other than it's what I truly believe. He is one of the, the most unique individuals, passionate individuals that I've ever known. And um, Jim Harris is over 80 years old. He has made his money. He does not need to do this. Um, but inside of him, there is such a, um, I, I don't a, a passion is what it is, a passion for this. You know, and, and I don't know if he quite said it at the, at, at the dinner, but I know he, in, he implied it. You know, when he read Barry's book, it changed his life. And, uh, and that was the case with me as well. Uh, I mean, at least our professional lives and, uh, that he has continued and, you know, his, his physical health is not good, but his mind is so sharp and he is so committed to this that, you know, he, he, um, he did not want to get up and talk at dinner. I can tell you because, <laughs> because I had to do some sweet talking to get him to do it. But, I'll tell you what, when, once he did it, it was, um, it was a special moment. It really was. I mean, obviously Cliff got it. I did too. I, I told him, you know, Jim, you just hit the ball out of the park. It was, it was really, and a hell of a salesman. I mean, I, how do you get a whole room full of people to become members? <laughs> <laughs> he did it in one fell swoop. Right. Uh, <laughs> all right. Let's, let's go on to session five. Advanced Training and Technology Innovations. This one started with Alan Rathy. Alan, uh, I believe we had Alan on the show a while, a long time back on uh, green cleaning. Maybe, I don't. Cliff? Maybe I don't remember. But in any event, um, what Alan talked about was that we are drowning in information while simultaneously being starved for knowledge. And that the majority of this information that we get is sales hype and exaggeration. And he just kind of talked about the importance of being able to separate the information we, you know, the knowledge we need from the information. Uh, you know, many of these marketing messages that we hear are not accurate. They're not truthful. Um, and he talked about the need for specialization and that we need to know more about less. And, uh, you know, those were my takeaways. Again, uh, pretty inspiring stuff. I, th I think that he... Uh, you know, is a fan uh, of Deming, and uh, you know, I think I think he lives it. He's passionate about it, John. Yeah, he definitely is. Um, I asked uh, Alan to uh, present at at the symposium, uh, in in large part, be and and unfortunately, this kind of somewhat got lost because of some technical difficulties. But I feel like Alan has uh, is doing as good a job, or maybe a better job than anybody else in the cleaning industry that I'm aware of, at at, at outreach for learning with millennials. And you know they don't they you know we're not going to see a lot of millennials at things like our symposium. We've got to figure other ways to reach them. You know, this would be an example of a way to reach them, you know, with a webinar where you can, you know, tune in when, when you want. Uh, and the type of e-learning that he is, uh, has developed for cleaning, I, I was very impressed with the actual uh, courses that he's developing. And he communicated that, uh, again, it was a little bit lost because of some technical difficulties. Uh, but, you know, 
the 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 things that that he is working on today i think it are very important for the future and um that would that's that's all i really think i have for for it right now you know i, I checked it out and i we did not have alan you're correct cliff i was confusing him with uh steve ashkin ashkin group right. green cleaning uh yep show number 122 back in 2009 uh, anyway, let's uh, let's move on to our next overview. Randy Rapp, Doctor Randy Rapp, and Chris Baker. No, I know we've had Randy Rapp on the show. <laughs> right, right. Look, what are your thoughts? Well, Rand, Randy Rapp is with uh, Purdue University. He's in um, the uh, construction management department, and um, you know, one of the things just to go off on a tangent, but. Um, there was a dream of someone by the name of bon bon, Bob Bonwell uh, from uh, the Indianapolis area, a distributor out there. And uh, Bob's dream was to have restoration uh, taught at a college level. He had a relative at Purdue. Um, you know, he discussed this with uh, the, the relative at Purdue. Uh, you know, the bottom line was if the restoration industry could raise – uh, a million and a half dollars. There was someone at Purdue who was, who would be willing to uh, match it, and that's what it takes to you know start teaching this on a uh, you know collegiate level. A million and a half dollars wasn't raised all at once. It was raised you know by people donating I think like fifteen thousand dollars a year for ten years, and you know agreeing to do that. And uh, Randy, you know, was the professor who, you know, was going to lead this. And, uh, you know, he was just proud to tell me that, you know, it was an undergraduate program. And now it is a graduate program. So someone can go, you know, to Purdue and, uh, you know, get a college education in disaster restoration. One of the interesting things that occurred is uh, one of the attendees for the Siri event was Jacqueline Carpenter, who we did uh, interview uh, previously on the show. We, we interviewed Jacqueline and her dad, uh, you know, on the same show. Butch. Um, yeah, Butch. And what was great was Jacqueline ended up hiring one of the first graduates uh, of this program when it was undergraduate and this person's been working for her for for seven years and he also joined her uh, at the conference so uh, what Randy was talking about is he brought with him someone by the name of Major Chris Baker and now I guess Chris is going to have to determine whether he wants to be called major or whether he wants to be called doctor or major doctor or whatever, because uh, he just defended his uh, PhD and received, you know, he received that, defended his uh, dissertation. And what they talked about was the growing need for the use of drones to provide ground, inf ground truthing information uh, in disaster zones. And um, that's what Chris Baker's uh, thesis was on, and he did a lot of work uh, with drones and just showed, uh, you know, slides of the drones working and, you know, what could be done with them and the whole, you know, kind of battle plan written out on how they work and, and just so on and so forth. And, you know, he talked about the sensors and, you know, the ability to provide timely information uh, you know, in damaged buildings and infrastructure, uh, you know, they can put infrared cameras on the drones and you know, they can see in the buildings and see stuff at night. And uh, they're just going to, um, they're just going to help revolutionize uh, emergency response, I think, in disaster restoration. So it really is a look at what the technology we have now and just seeing how it's going to be applied in the future. Uh, John may have something to add. Go ahead, John. Well, this was the one presentation that I missed, although I did review it ahead of time. And, and the last thing that you said, Cliff, was, was kind of why I wanted it um, to be included. And really what I, my takeaway was, this is a great example of applied technology. And it, it's there now, it's available, but it, you know, it, it, it's going to go through a, 
a process because before it's uh, used a lot, but I don't think that's going to be a long time coming. I would guess in, uh, in within a few years, it's going to be pretty darn common. Uh, probably the standard used in the industry. I think so. And I think it'll improve response. It's going to reduce costs and, uh, you know, be more effective. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and you get a more thorough investigation. I was just thinking if you could get a, a drone or a robot into a crawl space or a pipe chase or any number of situations where, uh, you know, it's just difficult to access without tearing something up or putting someone in some kind of danger. I, I can see this being a huge uh, growth area in the uh, restoration world and uh, also in the indoor air quality industry. So very interesting. IAQ Radio Platinum sponsor is John Don Products, where restoration and abatement contractors shop. Visit them at johndon.com. That's J-O-N-D-O-N.com. Gold sponsors are Particles Plus engineers and manufacturers of feature-rich particle counters and air quality monitoring instrumentation. Learn more at ParticlesPlus.com. Count on us. Healthy Indoors Magazine, a free online digital magazine for industry professionals and consumers. Subscriptions available at HealthyIndoors.com. And AEML Laboratories, free FedEx shipping, great pricing, same-day results, and never a rush fee. Learn more at AEMLinc.com. Gray Wolf Sensing Solutions, who use advanced sensor software technology and embedded computers to provide superior environmental test instrumentation. Visit them at WolfSense.com. Association sponsors are the Indoor Air Quality Association, a multidisciplinary organization dedicated to promoting the exchange of indoor environmental information through education and research. Learn more at iaqa.org and RIA, the Restoration Industry Association, the granddaddy of the restoration industry. Network with leaders. Learn more at restorationindustry.org. Siri, the Cleaning Industry Research Institute. See more deeply through science and research. Learn more at siriscience.org. That's C-I-R-I science.org. Let's, let's go on to uh, Bob Robinson. Cliff, uh, thoughts on Bob's presentation in the Advanced Training and Technology Innovations uh, session. Um, one of the, the common problems in, in commercial cleaning is washrooms. And uh, I think we all have been at the washrooms that were poorly maintained and didn't look good and, and didn't smell good and really just didn't feel good. You know, that you had that ooh factor going. And, and what Bob did is he invented, uh, you know, he's an engineer by, um, you know, by training and he married into a, uh, cleaning uh, equipment family and uh, what he developed was uh, what they call touchless cleaning uh, for washrooms so you know previously you know the people that were cleaning the washroom had to get down their hands and knees and you know get it you know get in this yucky area and clean that yucky area and uh, what he did is he developed a, cl uh, a piece of equipment that could uh, apply cleaning solution and chemicals and, and pressure and had built in vacuum and he created uh, special tools that attached uh, you know, to this piece of equipment so that the entire bathroom could be cleaned you know from the mirrors to the you know to the toilet or, or to the commode and uh, the company's called Kyvac uh, the uh, technology has grown I would say that's probably the dominant method now that's used in uh, you know, in commercial cleaning uh, washrooms, uh, certainly in the United States and North America, and they sell the equipment uh, globally. But he, he's Bob, someone that just never stops. He keeps, uh, you know, trying to, you know, keep improving it. And the latest improvement was to outfit the equipment 
uh, with the ability for teaching and learning. So what they did is, I guess the best way to describe it is they have a little computer that's on the uh, piece of equipment, you know, that has a screen, and you, you kind of turn it on, and it tells you how to operate the equipment and how to actually clean uh, a washroom with it. And what's remarkable is he, is, he, is he showed a study where they took people that had never cleaned uh, a washroom before and how fast they could learn to operate uh, the equipment. And, you know, within very short order, they were as proficient or almost as proficient uh, in, in, in using this to clean the, a washroom as, you know, would, would have been a skilled uh, operator. And, you know, because this little computer screen is on there, uh, it has video, uh, it has audio, and he talked about a situation where they had a bunch of employees that came from, I don't remember what country it was, John, I think around India or some, Sri Lanka, you know, someplace over there that couldn't speak English. And what they did was they just turned off the audio. And the training video was so good that it, you know, that it taught them. And, uh, you know, I, re I really never thought about it. I, I asked the question, you know, what about curveballs? Because, uh, you know, in the restoration business, we just get curveballs all the time. You know, no two jobs are the same. Very rarely are surfaces the same. And uh, the feedback was that we could teach uh, you know, basic skills with it, and we could teach principles with it. And I, I didn't get it initially, but after I asked the question and got the response, uh, I got it. But very, very uh, interesting to see what a uh, an innovative thinking manufacturer is doing, because they're definitely product leader. Interesting. John, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, the um, one, I guess this is one thing I have maybe a, a, a deeper appreciation for because of my years spent uh, uh, with Steam and Demon. And I, during that time, my, I was primarily uh, working in the jam sand world. And that is how difficult it is to do training in the jam sand world. So this actual this presentation came to be, frankly, uh, as a result of a meeting that we had. Uh, Bob's on the on the executive committee of Siri, and we had a meeting at Kivac. Uh, it was actually a, a SAC meeting, a, a Science Advisory Council meeting, uh, last fall, and uh, he he took us for a tour of the facility, and I happened to notice these iPads or you know pad type things on the machines and I asked him about it and he told me what they were doing and I thought this is incredible because training again training in the Jansan world is it's non-stop and it's highly ineffective because uh, it, it there's such a high turnover rate and the ability to um, uh, uh, have people there to properly train uh, new 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 uh, workers. It, I mean, it, it's just a it's a nightmare, and this eliminates all that. Now, you're always it's always available. The training is always first rate, uh, and it can be repeated and stop. You know, you can stop and 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 look. Uh, at the at the uh, uh, training session and then start it up again do some of it. Um, it it you know I talked in the last one about Millennials and that and whether you're Millennials or, or somebody older this is new technology this is you know that actually it's not really new technology it's new application of existing technology that I think is um, um, I, I, I mean that's, you talk about paradigm shifts that's a paradigm shift in the in the Jansan world because they really really struggle with having properly trained workers and this I'm not going to say it eliminates the problem but boy it makes a huge difference uh, and so that's what I mean that's 
that's why I felt like Bob ne really needed to talk about what they've done there. All right. Let's go to the final panel. Session six was on management sciences, efficiencies, and economics, survey data. Uh, the first two speakers were the Harris, uh, Jim Harris Sr. and Brian Harris. Cliff? Well, um, what, what happened was uh, Janitronics cleans a, what they called a foundry for computer chips. And what happened was uh, the client wanted them to validate the cleaning process because the company's uh, product was going to undergo this validation as well. So what Janitronics did is they completed um, this ISO uh, 9000 you know, 2015 certification uh, for the cleaning processes that are done at this foundry. And it's a very, very complicated uh, process. It involves, you know, an audit by, you know, an ISO certified auditor at the end and a whole bunch of paperwork. And, you know, the thing is you just have to document and, and prove that, uh, your cleaning process really cleans and you, know, you have to have the documentation and so on and so forth. This is neither a fast nor an inexpensive uh, project. I know people that have done it. Uh, I knew someone that did it in the restoration industry, actually. And this company spent about $50,000 just on the consulting uh, in order to, uh, to get it done. And it seems that Jim Harris Sr. is also uh, into Toyota management and the, uh, the Toyota way. And um, according to Toyota, uh, decisions should be made slowly. Uh, they should be made with consensus. But uh, once they're made, they should be rapidly implemented. And, uh, you know, Jim showed that uh, you know, by improving quality, it actually, uh, quality is improved when productivity uh, improves. And it really enabled him to capture uh, a market with better quality at, at a lower price. And what they did is they gave an example of using, of including the customer in your business strategy. In this case, the customer needed this done and they kind of catered to the customer and they maintained a uh, very profitable uh, piece of business. And, uh, you know, what's interesting is Jim's is uh, Brian Harris uh, is not Jim Harris's son. Brian Harris is actually Jim Harris's grandson. Mm -hmm. And uh, right out of college, he went to work for the company and this project, uh, you know, was his baby. And again, uh, you know, one of the things they gave out, you know, I have a copy of is uh, the charts for, uh, you know, the implementation of this and, you know, what they did and, whoops, I guess it's a little backwards, you know, what they did and how they did it. Very, very impressive, great presentation and, you know, kind of appreciating them uh, sharing the idea. John? John. Anything you'd like to add? Yeah, and uh, I mean, one of the things, and I'm not sure whether he said it during the presentation. I know we've had some conversations about it, uh, you know, other than at, at the symposium. But, you know, Jim felt that going through the process of ISO uh, 9000 changed his company in that it forced them to look at some things, some systems and, and, and new ways and better ways. So, uh, you know, it, I, it was not by any means a painless experience. Uh, <laughs> he, they were still in the middle of it when I first started working uh, with Jim, uh, with Siri, and, and there were, we, we had some conversations about it, but uh, it was, you know, again, it, it ultimately it was worthwhile, and to some extent, it it changed the way they they approached their business. So it's 
kind of a big deal, not for everyone. Uh, and he would be the first one to say that, but he feels as though there's a lot of companies, especially larger companies. And I wasn't able to find anybody in the restoration business who had done it close. So I was, I was kind of looking to find somebody because I honestly, I wanted to get somebody other than, you know, the company that, that is owned by the chairman of Siri uh, for it, but I, I wasn't able to find them. Uh, but, uh, you know, I would think some of the larger restorers would also be good uh, um, prospects for that sort of a process. Uh, the company that I know uh, that's done it is a company called NCRI. Uh, they're out of Wichita, uh, Kansas. Okay. And uh, they, they did it probably, I would say, maybe 10 years ago. Uh, it, it's It's been quite some time. But okay. I think they were the first, certainly the first restoration company in the world to did, you know, to do it. And either they're the only or probably one of only a few. Okay, that have thank done you. It. All right, let's move on. Uh, Carl Grimes, friend of the show, Hayward Healthy Homes. Uh, Cliff, what did, uh, what key points did you pick up from Carl's presentation? Well, I think a lot of people in the audience show didn't know who Carl was and didn't know his life story, nor did they know anything about Hayward uh, Healthy Homes uh, and the project. And for any listeners that may not be familiar with it, um, the the owner, uh, Mr. Hayward and his family, uh, had issues with a had all had issues with a health issue, or all had health issues with a home that they were living in, and uh, decide you know after investigation determined that the house and problems within the house, faults and flaws, were causing their health issues and became, I guess, obsessed with the idea uh, of improving building and improving homes. And uh, so what they now have done is they have a free online questionnaire uh, of which 46,000 people uh, have responded to it. And this has resulted in what they call big data. They have just response after response. And what they've done is charted and, and analyzed uh, the data. One of the things I didn't know about is uh, at the time, Mr. Hayward's daughter was 11 years old, and she was very attached to uh, stuffed animals that she had. And this resulted in what they call the stuffy protocol. So it's written by an 11-year-old girl. And if you research Hayward uh, Homes, uh, I'll put the link in the blog. You can go there and learn about uh, how you can clean and decontaminate uh, stuffed animals. So, uh, you know, they're not going to make your children, uh, your children ill. Uh, he told us that labs can detect only 230 substances in dust and uh, dust in houses is, is a big problem. It contributes to, uh, health problems and in all the, I think they, in their, um, you know, in their survey, I think they have 23 different health issues uh, of which dust is a contributor to all 23 of them. So those were my takeaways uh, from Carl's presentation. Yeah. I think they were actually surprised to find that they, I, I think they thought, you know, there would be other, you know, chemicals or mold or whatever that would uh, more closely correspond with health issues. But at this point, it's it's dust. And uh, what does that fit right in with what we're discussing today, cleaning and health? So, John, your thoughts? Yeah, I'm going to I, I, I'm sure that you guys have interviewed uh, Carl on this before. So you have some idea. Uh, the only thing I would really add is I just think it's great that somebody is developing this database of information. And as it keeps growing, it's going to be more and more useful in ways. I mean, Carl has even said that he doesn't know exactly how it's going to be useful, but he feels as though it's, it's, it's going to provide information that people can use. And, and it does kind of, it, it, it also, dovetails into what Siri is about because as they g gather this data and this information, researchers can use it to, in developing protocols uh, for different projects. So um, 
I, I just think it's really important. Carl is a gem. You all know that. Uh, and, um, you know, I think it, the people in the, in the parts of the industry that do not know him, the cleaning uh, industry, and I mean, he's known in the restoration industry, maybe not as well uh, as he should be. But uh, I, I think it was a, a great way to, for him to um, um, uh, give an introduction to the people in that world. Sure. Joe, um, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. All okay. right. You've known Carl, I think, longer than I've known him and longer than John's known him. Okay. And when I talk about the moderators doing an excellent job in getting to know uh, the, the panelists, I learned two things about Carl that I never knew before. I'm going to tell you what they are and ask you whether or not you knew these things before. All right. Did you know that Carl is an expert and is actually a referee, I guess an internationally recognized referee in croquet? <laughs> I did not. <laughs> okay. And also, uh, <laughs> and also, he he knows a lot about NASCAR cars and has actually raced those types of cars and uh, you know worked with with racing. I didn't know that either. I did know that one. Yes, uh, okay. that one really. You know, you wouldn't think of Carl as a, a NASCAR uh, you know a fan. Yes. Right. Sitting there well, five, five, it was five. beyond fan. It was beyond actually, you know, driving them and you know knowing a whole lot about that. But, yeah. Yep. He uh, and Carl's a farm boy as well. He he right. grew up on a farm, so uh, he's 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 gotten his hands dirty so dirty over the years. That's for sure. All right, we've got. Uh, let's see. Chuck Violand is up, and then uh, Alan Rathy again. I think uh, Alan must have done two presentations. Let's talk about our good friend. Mr. Violand, who's been on the show several times. Uh, Chuck did a, a really good job. And, you know, what he did is he comes out and, uh, you know, he, he'd been there from the beginning. He'd heard all these presentations about in, infection control and everything. And he comes out and the first thing he does is he puts on rubber gloves, so he does latex gloves, so he doesn't touch anything and pick <laughs> up anything uh, contagious. And what he talked about was, you know, this, his subject was timeless management skills learned at the dinner table and you know things that he learned growing up uh in his family that um you know that ended up uh, helping him help other people uh in business and you know the list was uh showing gratitude uh communicating uh putting others first uh not wasting and uh doing your job so it was just really really well done and um you know that was the only i, I guess what would you call it like uh, a motivational uh type present it was a learning but it was also quite motivational uh in how chuck did it john he's an excellent speaker uh, yeah. john anything you'd like to add yeah he really is uh more background on his presentation than the actual presentation himself. Um, I mean, when I talk to Chuck about it, I, I've known Chuck a long time, sure. uh, more than 30 years. And, um, you know, and his company does consulting with family businesses and, and business management type consulting. And, um, you know, I've taught Chuck attended the uh, IICRC um, technical conference that I put on uh, in 2017, a couple years ago. And he came away from that, number one, very impressed, but uh, number two and related, kind of intimidated at, at all the scientific information. So when I approached him about speaking at this conference, uh, he was a little bit reluctant. No, he was a lot reluctant at first. <laughs> One thing that Siri is, is doing, originally we were entirely uh, technical science and, and research, but we are expanding the scope of what we do into um, business management areas. 
because they do dovetail together and the best technical information if not properly used in the business framework is going to be not be very valuable and um, Cliff as you said I mean this isn't doesn't fit into any one any uh, particular book other than probably the good book uh, but the things that that um, uh, and I told Chuck this because he, he sent me the presentation and he wanted to get my feedback I said Chuck these this, this is man this is the core of what management is I mean these are as these are timeless lessons these are things that we've that human beings have learned about getting along uh, for over thousands of years since the dawn of civilization. And um, I think they're important and they, they do apply. Everything you talked about, uh, it show some gratitude, know who you're following and what you stand for. Talk to me, share, share what's on the table, clean your plate, do your job. And the last one, which is, was, I think the funniest one was save your fork. That's for dessert. <laughs> uh, and, and if you do the first six, you're going to get dessert. And that's, that's an important thing. So I thought it was wonderful. Um, again, as I said, he was a little nervous about it. It's not really hard science, but I do think it fits uh, in, in an industry that, first of all, has, is filled with family businesses, often multi-generational family businesses uh, and you know and and is very if this industry if this is although it this is science and research and technical information is important if you're going to be successful in this industry and I apologize for that phone but it's going to have to ring so excuse me um, if this industry is going to be um, if you're going to be successful in this industry, the kind of values that he talked about there are critical. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. Last but not least, the final presentation I have on this list, you guys let me know if I'm wrong, was again, Alan Rathy. Uh, Cliff, highlights from that one. Looks like we're coming right up on uh, two hours, so this went very well. Um, what Alan talked about in his second uh, presentation was achieving quality using Deming management tips. And, you know, you'd wonder how um, Deming, who is, is, is well known for improving uh, quality and productivity uh, in Japanese uh, automaking, uh, what that's going to have to do, how that's going to transfer, uh, you know, to cleaning. And Alan apparently does a lot of work with uh, Executive Housekeeping Association. And um, you know, he just kind of went through uh, and, and kind of explained it. And one of the terms he used was this thing called Wiseyati. And what that stands for is what you see is all there is. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, know, I, you know, I just you know, kind of, kind of wrote it down. And what this has resulted in is what he calls ICM. And this is a system for successful management, measuring and enhancing uh, cleaning processes and outcomes. And, you know, these executive housekeepers are cleaning places like Ritz Carlton and, and Four Seasons and places like that, which just have huge, uh, customer expectations. John? Yeah, um, what you said, Cliff. I, I, and, uh, ICM, uh, the actual acronym is Integrated Cleaning and Measurement. And I feel like uh, what Alan is onto there is when you combine Deming's principles with uh, ICM a, as a measuring tool, you get measurable uh, still, he called a stepped improvement. Um, he, he contrasted continuous improvement, which he thinks is a fallacy that you just can't have that. Um, and I understand that that's part of Deming's uh, teaching as well, uh, with uh, continual stepped improvement, which is a process that can be followed, developed, followed, and measured. Mm -hmm. 
All right, gentlemen. Well, I'm just checking in real quick to see uh, if uh, anybody got back to me about next week here, but no, so far, no. Uh, this is Radio Joe Hughes saying thank you so much to um, my co-host, the Z-Man, Cliff Zlotnick, and of course, our guest for today, John Donnie. I know you are probably going to sleep well this weekend uh, after after all the hard work of preparing for a uh, conference, especially a science-based conference. Um, you know, putting cleaning and science together has been, I think it's it's imperative that uh, if the industry is going to continue to, to move forward and uh, continue to proffer, profit, uh, we're going to have to combine science with cleaning and, of course, health. So I appreciate both of you taking the time to join us today. And, uh, of course, John Faith. Uh, John, you got to have faith at the controls. Uh, I want to thank Pete, the Restoration Industries Global Watchdog Consigli, for also joining us for the first half of the show. This is Radio Joe Hughes saying we'll see you next Friday at noon for the next episode of IAQ Radio Plus. For IAQ Radio, I'm Spike Reed saying thanks for listening.